Hello, this is Dread from Epic Builds. In this video topic, we'll go over my Avalanche Earthquake Shaman, an interesting take on a cast on hit build. Before we go over this guide, I want to provide a disclaimer. This build does lag a lot. Also in the video, I'm using a Raider Axe instead of a Catalyst. For the guide, I have replaced it for a Catalyst so that we don't take 15% increased damage. And also as well, for Lagan, Aftershocks cannot hit him, so you do have to use Channeled Avalanche instead of just using Earthquake uh, Proc Avalanche on him because otherwise you'll do no damage. So that's just the only boss in the game you have to do that, so it's just only Lagan. Before we get into the video, I would like to promote my own Twitch stream. I have been streaming a lot more here at twitch.tv slash apprentice epoch builds. Come and join in sometime to talk to our wonderful community and ask questions about the game. So the mechanics of the build work like this. You earthquake on the ground, causing two to five aftershocks to prog on enemies nearby. Then for each time an aftershock hits an enemy, it creates two boulders. Then that aftershock repeats and fires more boulders. Each of these boulders costs five mana. These boulders are also modified by the avalanche skill tree, which we can crit with each of these boulders and cast even more boulders. This build was not possible in the prior patch as we had no way of paying for the boulders pretty much other than Tempest Strike as mana regen was really bad last patch. Now that mana regen is really good this patch, that 5 mana per boulder cost isn't as punishing. So for Earthquake, we grab Snow Crash, which the whole build is built around. The Aftershocks will home in on enemies and create two boulders per enemy hit. So if a single Aftershock hits five enemies, it would create five boulders. Shattered Earth is another important node, doubling the amount of Earth Aftershocks we get, making for even more boulder spammage. Two points in Overwhelm gives us haste and frenzy for four seconds, which is very cool and amazing for us. We then grab two nodes in Buffet to lower the mana cost of Earthquake, allowing us to spam it more. Alpine Guide is the most important node in Avalanche, giving us boulders for each crit our bol original boulders do, meaning if one boulder crits five enemies, it will create five boulders that can't crit, multiplying our damage immensely when we crit. Explosive Impact and Mountain's Fury both increase our damage and clear immensely, causing our boulders to clear packs like nothing and also overlap, causing Alpine Guide to create even more boulders. Frost turns all of our boulder damage into cold damage, so we can utilize a lot of the cold damage percentage support that Shaman has. Harsh Winter and Grounding gives us huge amounts of more damage for our avalanches. For Warcry, we take Shallow Breath to reduce the cooldown to 5 seconds, and then take Frost Claw, giving us 250% increased damage with our boulders. Battle Cry and Bringer of Winter gives us 200% increased crit chance, filling out most of our critical strike chance. The Tempest Strike and Thorn Totem skill trees will be in the build planner in the description, but for a brief description of what they do, Tempest Strike gives us mana on use for our Earthquake when we need it, which isn't as bad thanks to mana regeneration, and Thorn Totem gives us all of our increased damage thanks to the top of the Shaman Tree and our idle slots. Silent Protector and Elemental Shrines gives us a large amount of mana regeneration, and combined with our gear, we'll pay for 5 mana cost per boulder tax this build accrues. Shattered Heavens and Rune of Awe give us a large amount of flat damage, which makes up for the fact that we're running a one-handed Scepter and Catalyst instead of a two-handed Staff. Ascendant Circle is the main reason we're running Thorn Totems, giving us 160% increased spell damage when our Thorn Totems are out. 
Of course, we're running the defensive suite of Primalus, Boarheart, Porcine Constitution, Earthsign Strength, and Primal Strength for large amounts of damage resistance. For gearing, the most important piece of the build is our helmet base, Horned Cowl. The main reason why is since we're converting Avalanche to Cold, we cannot benefit from the Druid's free physical damage leech, meaning we have to get our leech elsewhere, which means Horned Cowl becomes best in slot. For a focus on affixes, we need Mana Regeneration, Spell Critical Strike Chance, Resistances, Critical Strike Multiplier, Increase, and Hybrid Health. For a full showcase of gear, check the build planner in the description for more. For idols, we mainly need idols with chance to summon thorn totem on hit and cold damage per active totem for ornate slots. For the other slots, spell damage while you have an active thorn totem works fine. Thank you all for watching. This has been Dread from Epic Builds and have a wonderful rest of your day.